What's going on guys? It's Caleb and I'm back with another video. So what we're going to be doing today is another illustration on the iPad using Adobe Illustrator. What we're going to do is we're going to get the sketchbook out, get a little sketch going, and we're going to turn it into a vector. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So what I do first is I get the sketchbook out. This is a great way to get whatever you're thinking about out of your head and onto something physical like paper. Oftentimes you find yourself kind of confused or maybe scared to start, but just getting a rough sketch helps you get into the flow. So I decided I was gonna do a light bulb, so I wanted to get the overall parts put together and then I can go and clean them up on my iPad once I take a picture and import it onto the iPad. Now that I got the sketch done, like I said, I'll take a picture and I'll drop the opacity on my iPad and I'll start laying out the basic shapes. Pretty much all objects in life is just the combination of simple shapes and this light bulb right here is no exception. All it is here is a circle and a rectangle. I'm just going to combine them and that'll give me the first shape of the light bulb. Now that I got the glass done, I'm going to add the stem. The stem is just a repetition of rounded rectangles. To make this piece look nice, I'm making sure that I'm keeping everything symmetrical. For this particular style, a nice symmetrical design really helps the overall composition. I think that's why I like illustrating on the iPad. I can still use the traditional symmetrical design style that a lot of vector artists like to use, but I can also use some freeform shapes with the pen tool. Pretty much everything's where I want it to go, so now I can start coming through and adding colors and shades. This is really where the piece is gonna start coming together and I'm gonna really like where it's going. How I do most of my highlights and shadows is with the subtraction tool. So I'm just gonna take two shapes, line them up, and I can use the shape builder to subtract the top layer and give me that reflection or shadow that I'm looking for. Once you start understanding how to do highlights and shadows this way, it's really gonna transform your style and take your pieces to the next level. I really like the soft oranges and yellows I used in this. I think it's a fun color, but sometimes I have a hard time figuring out what colors I want to use. If you ever find yourself in this predicament, there's a lot of resources online that'll help you find complementary colors to choose from. So I pretty much have everything where I want it. So what I'm gonna do now is just add some last little touches and flair, and we're gonna get the composition where I want it. One last little shadow, and there it is, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I had a lot of fun putting it together, and hopefully you were able to follow along and create something cool. Well guys, that's all I got for you. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up for me. And if you want to see content like this in the future, make sure you're subscribed. If you want to see content like this now, you can just go back to my older videos. I have a ton of illustrations, logo designs, rebrands. Check it out. If you want to get a hold of me, I'll have my Discord link below. It's a great place for us to chat and just talk design. Well guys, I appreciate you being here. And until the next time, peace.